Hi guys and welcome to today's video with me, the Maths Guru. Yes, otherwise known as Darren. I have a real name. It's awesome. Welcome. If this is your first time to my channel, it's really good to see you. If you're an old time subscriber, you know what's coming next. Fast forward the next 10 seconds. Look, if you're new, it would be great if you could do me a favor and you see that little red over there, uh, red arrow over there with a little doohickey? Subscribing to my channel is great. All of these videos are hosted on YouTube and YouTube subscribers actually make the world of difference. I also know that people are watching. If you don't want to do it now, because you're just trying to weigh up, am I any good? I get that. There'll be an opportunity at the end of the video for you to subscribe as well. Now, I normally sound a bit better than this, but unfortunately, yep, I have man flu, which we guys know is, is like a pretty bad cold. So if I'm missing my usual humor, uh, then uh, just forgive me. Uh, I'm going to do my best for you. But Wow, we're going to deal with a lesson on the triangle sum. The triangle sum? Yeah, the sum of the triangle angles. And as is normal, when I start my lessons, I like to do a little bit of a recap, or at least let you know what we're going to learn. And you can sort of see it here. Now again, there's a red arrow above me that's highlighting. It probably says something like, the learning. Duh. What do you mean, the learning? Well, guys, we're going to know that firstly, or learn that as firstly is 180 degrees in a triangle. Probably most people know that. How to find the size of missing angles, how to find the difference between a, a right angle triangle and all the different triangles out there. How to identify which angles are the same in an isosceles triangle. Uh, how many degrees are on a straight line. And how to find angles using fuzzocks. And you're going to say, fuzzocks, and I'm going to say, don't swear. Uh, fuzzocks is, is a little word I've made up, but it's awesome. Now, We've done angles in year six, and if you're over here in Australia and doing this in a year seven context, well, that's awesome. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, but generally speaking with angles in year six, you probably measured them. You had to use that, that, that torture instrument called a protractor, um, which sort of then helped you find these angles. But the good news is, actually, by the time we get to year seven, eight, nine maths, we don't use a protractor anymore. You can sort of dispense with it. Um, and we use maths, we use a calculator basically, and a couple of basic rules, and those are the rules we're gonna deal with today. So the first we're gonna deal with um, is pretty much using all of mathematics, and it's probably one of the most important ones in the world, and it's funnily enough, one of the ones that uh, lots of people get wrong. And uh, if you've been uh, taught by me recently, uh, then your pretest. Uh, the reason I'm doing this video for you is because, yeah, unfortunately, you didn't really understand much about what uh, this lesson's about. So let's just deal with uh, some basics first. And firstly, there's uh, all sorts of different triangles. Uh, and one you need to know about uh, is an equilateral triangle. So what is an equilateral triangle? Well, I like the words equi because equal, uh, no, not equal or squeal, uh, equi means the same. And so with an equilateral triangle, what I generally do is put little marks on here. Now what that tells me is, funnily enough, that those sides are the same length. Now whenever I see these little lines, I actually put angles, or uh, sorry, I put little arrows on the end of them as well, because what that does is it also points to an angle that is the same size as well. And so what it suggests is that this angle, and this angle, and this angle are all the same size. Now I'm going to rush ahead with a little bit of the learning. I'm going to tell you that actually the biggest rule we use in maths is that angles, and I'm going to do a little angles or angles in a triangle. Now let's not do that. Let's do the actual angle sign. This is an angle funny enough. So angles in a triangle make or always add to 180 degrees. Now for those of you who got no idea what that means, I've literally drawn an angle and put a little apostrophe S after it. So it's angles. And then I've drawn a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. And in maths, we like to write the shortcuts. We like to write language that makes sense without writing a whole essay. So if I know that all of the angles in that triangle add up to 180 degrees and all of the angles are the same, then actually, if I do 180 degrees divided by three, because there's those three triangles or three angles, gives me 60 degrees. And that is one of the great things that you must, must learn. Now, an isosceles triangle. Isosceles. Uh, I would normally ask people to try and spell that word, and it's just a, a road uh, accident. It's a car crash. It's horrible. But isosceles basically means that you have a triangle where two of the sides are the same length. Now, you're going to say, well, why did I do two little marks? Do you know what? I don't know. It's just weird. It's a math convention. Who would know? But again, wherever I do little marks like that on a triangle, I turn them into arrows, and what it points to is actually for an isosceles triangle, 
two angles are the same size. Now again, in a triangle, those angles, all three of them will add to give me 180 degrees. But the good news, if I know two of them are the same, then I can use that to do some pretty funky maths. And then we get to this scalene triangle. What on earth is a scalene triangle? Well, now basically a scalene triangle is where if I do a dot and a triangle and a circle, then it says that all of those angles are different sizes. Why? Because a scalene triangle, the sides are different. They're all different lengths. And if they're all different lengths, that means the angles are different. Now these are the ones we tend to get most of, all right? Unless the question is trying to trick you. And what's maths? A big fact trick, yes. Now the last one I'm gonna deal with here is a right angle triangle. And we absolutely in mathematics love right angle triangles. Now when you get to year nine, we're gonna have things like something called trigonometry and Pythagoras the thing theorem. Actually, did you know Pythagoras, don't tell anyone, was allegedly a murderer. I know, go figure. Now there's actually a video on my YouTube channel about that. Can you find it? If not, it is freaking awesome. I might put a link down below. I might not. We'll see how it goes, see how it feels. But the thing about a right angle triangle is what it's trying to tell you is that one of the angles in there is, believe it or not, a right angle. And a right angle is always 90 degrees. Now again, this is something you've undoubtedly dealt with in year six. Now, have you noticed I've not yet used reflex or acute or obtuse or any of those angles? Because we've sort of moved past that now. We're, we're, we're on that, let's find the size. So if they give me this right angle, this little square in the corner, then I automatically know one of those angles. And the thing is, they do this without marking it. They'll never actually put 90 degrees beside it. It's for you to realize that that's what it means. So, here we go. Angles in the triangle, the rule. Every single one of the triangles, as we have said, has 180 degrees inside it. Doesn't matter how big I make the triangle, how small I make the triangle, whether it's right angle or equilateral, it always has 180 degrees inside of it. Now, that's awesome. If we know that, we can find literally the size of any angle. Now, the last thing you guys really need to know is that in maths, we do not draw diagrams to scale. Now, I don't know how many of you will have sat there in a test with a triangle and tried to measure all of the angles. You wasted your time. Doesn't matter how good you are with a protractor. Diagrams are not, unless they say so, drawn to scale. So it's all maths now. It's all this idea that's 180 degrees. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here is a scalene triangle. I've just drawn a really bad scalene triangle there. And I'm going to say to you, this angle here is 60 degrees, and this angle here is 40 degrees, and I'm going to write a letter A in there. Now with any triangle, they have to give you two angles inside to help you find the third angle. But whenever I see a triangle, I'm going to say, oh, I know. Angles inside that triangle add up to 180 degrees. So I know that 60 degrees plus 40 degrees plus this letter A must, 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 must always equal 180 degrees. And you're gonna say, do I have to write this working out stuff? And I'm gonna say yes. If you are taught by me, or in fact any teacher that in a school that I'm currently working in, and you don't do the working out, you're gonna lose all of your marks. Because with most of these questions, you'll get three marks for every single question. One for writing stuff down, one for simplifying it, and one for finding an answer. So what I've said is, angle number one, so the first angle, which is 60 degrees, added to my second angle, added to my third angle, is 180 degrees. Well, I know what 60 plus 40 is. It is 100 degrees. Plus A is 180 degrees. I'm gonna take away 100 from both sides so that I can get this letter A on its own and A works out to be 80 degrees. Now again, that would be worth one mark, this would be worth one mark, and this would be one worth, worth one mark in an exam. So for every question that you do now, for me or any math teacher, should show that level of working out. Uh, what about an isosceles triangle? Now before I do this one, if this is going too quick, then stop, rewind, Pause, take time to think about it, look at my working out. That makes you a good math student. Going back, sometimes you have to watch it two, three times and then you go, I get this, that's good. Now an isosceles triangle, if you remember, has these two little marks inside of it. And it tells me that those two angles there are the same. So if I tell you that this angle here, for example, is 70 degrees, and I want to find that little A there, 
Well, the good news is because I now know because of the arrows are pointing to this angle here and that angle there, that means they are the ones that are identical in size. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that now means that that angle there is also 70 degrees. Do I know my two angles inside my triangle? I should Coco. So I now know that 70 degrees plus 70 degrees plus A degrees is 180 degrees. Or well, 70 plus 70 is 140 degrees plus A is equal to 180. I'm going to get rid of that 140, so I'm going to take away 140 from both sides. And that tells me that the angle of A is 40 degrees. This stuff is freaking awesome. Right angle triangles. Let me think. Let's draw a right angle triangle. There's a right angle triangle. Let's make this 50 degrees. I want to find the size of A. They're trying to trick you. Why? Well, they've written a right angle. You know what this is now. You know. And I would, if I was you, write down 90 degrees beside it so that you know. It's a triangle. All angles add up to 180 degrees. Have they given me two angles inside? I should, Coco. So I now know that 90 degrees plus 50 degrees plus A is 180 degrees. 90 plus 50 when I went to school was 140 degrees plus A is 180. I don't want that there, so I'm going to get rid of it. Sayonara, 140 degrees. So A is 180 degrees minus 140 degrees. And again, using my head or if you need to a calculator, I get the right answer. Now, you're probably going to say, well, hold on a moment, you can get, keep getting 40 degrees. Why? <laughs> it's because I'm trying to make this stuff up in my head. Don't stress me out. And we move on to an equilateral triangle. Now, I've already given you the answer to this, so you remember. Equilateral will be given as a triangle with three little marks, which tells me that all of the angles in the corners are identical. And so if I've got 180 degrees and three angles that are exactly the same, it means my angles are 60 degrees. Now, you're going to say, you didn't write much working down there, Maths Guru. And I'm going to say, no, I didn't need to. Because sometimes when you just look at a triangle and you know what the size of the angle is, well... You just write it down. Now, having got that, some of the questions in the exercise you're going to do if you're dealing with the Cambridge Essential textbook will just ask you to find those angles. So much respect. You can head off and do that and then come back to this video in a moment. If you're watching it on internet land, you've got no idea what I'm talking about. When you come back, let's deal with another very important rule. That is angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. Now, if I was to put my protractor on a straight line and measure it, then what I would find out is that there are always 180 degrees on this straight line. Now, what we do is we try and trick you in lots of different ways. And we say, uh, here is a straight line and I'm gonna draw a line off of it and I'm gonna write down here 70 degrees and I'm gonna put a little A there and I'm gonna say, find A. And many people go, I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, again, what I'm saying to you is look for anywhere there's a straight line. Because what I now know is it doesn't matter how many different sections I take my line in. And there's one section. So that's one section is 70 degrees. And this other section, which is A. I know that A plus 70 degrees is 180 degrees. So I don't want the 70 there. So I'm going to take away 70 from both sides. And that gives me 110 degrees. You see how freaking awesome this stuff is? It's just easy. Now, we can do things, you know, it doesn't always have to be in a straight line, you know, horizontally. They can try and trick us by doing slanty. But a line is a line is a line. And it will always have 180 degrees. So here's one there. I'm going to put a little fudgy mark there. And I'm going to do this there. I'm going to say that's 30 degrees. And I'm going to find, say, find X. And you're going to say, no, no, hold on a moment. Where's me A? You don't need an A. It can be called anything I like. It can be called X. It can be called elephant. I don't really care. But the point of it is, do you see the straight line? Now, you're going to say, yeah, I see lots of straight lines. There's one going off there. There's one going off there. There's one going there. Well, yeah, I know. But actually, this here is my straight line. Sorry about my really bad diagram. What do I know about angles on a straight line? Well, I know that all of the different sections, when they're added together, must make 180 degrees. Do you remember what this little sign here means? I should go, go, 90 degrees. So I now know that I've got 90 degrees and 30 degrees and this X that must make 180 degrees. 90 plus 30 gives me 120 degrees plus X is 180 degrees. And again, don't think you can just jump straight to the answer. Do your working out. 
I don't want that 120 there, so I'm going to take away 120 from both sides to get rid of it. And that gives me 60 degrees. Now, having got that, they're now going to trick us. And how are they going to trick us? Well, ladies and gentlemen, they're now going to combine the rules and make things just a little bit more complicated. But you've got this. You've got this sorted. It doesn't actually matter. Why? Because we can now put triangles and straight lines together and try and make it look more confusing, but it isn't. So, so here's an example. All right. Actually, I'm going to draw this again, and I'm just going to show you. Let's go back. Do you remember seeing this a moment ago? That was one of my questions. Yes. Well, all I need to do now is put this here, and I now have a straight line and a triangle. That one line has made the question look more complicated, but actually it isn't. So if I was to say this angle here is 110 degrees, that one there, and I was to say that this angle here is 70 degrees. And I said, find, let's call this the letter Y. Let's mix it up. Could we find it? Well, of course we can. Now, what we need to do is say, oh, hold on a moment. I see a triangle and a straight line. Well, this straight line actually becomes important to me because I know that angles on the straight line add up to 180 degrees. So I know that the 110 degrees and this angle here, and you're going to say, but they didn't give me that letter. They don't have to. It's a trick. You can add angles into any of these diagrams you want to. So I know, let's call this uh, X. I now know that the letter X plus 110 degrees must be 180. Oh, get rid of the 110 by taking it away from both sides. Gives me that value of X is 70 degrees. And you're going to say, I'm finished. And I'm going to go, no, you're not. Because remember, you've got to find the value of Y. And why do we need to do this? Well, for any triangle, I need to know two angles before... Oh, that's the wrong one. Don't do that. I need to find two angles before I can find my third one. So I had to find the value of x first before I could find the value of y. So now I'm sort of doing two calculations in one. So here is my triangle. What do I know? I know that 70 degrees plus 70 degrees plus y is 180 degrees. 70 plus 70 is 140 degrees, plus y is 180 degrees. Take away 140 from both sides, and y works out to be, oh, Kel, surprise, I've done it again, 40 degrees. Now, again, please do not think that the size of every angle in the world is 40 degrees. I'm trying to do these in my head. And again, because math is going to try and trick you, they can actually do triangles or diagrams completely upside down. It doesn't matter which way around it is. You just have to use the brain to try and move things around. So let's say this angle here is uh, 50. This angle here is 60. And I want to find this value here of x. And all I'm doing is I'm just twisting the question around, trying to make it look a little bit more complicated. Do you see the triangle? Tick. Do you see the straight line? Tick. Well, I'm going to start with a triangle this time. Why? Because they've given me one, two angles, and I can find this angle here. Angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So uh, oh, let's write it the right way around. So we know that, let's, oh, Darren M, give me the size of this angle. I'm going to call it A. So 50 plus 60 plus A is 180 degrees. All I've done is looked at each of those angles inside that triangle. 50 plus 60 gives me 110 degrees. Plus A is 180. Well, do I want that there? I should think not. So that goes. A is 180 degrees minus 110 degrees, which gives me an awesome angle of 70 degrees. I finished. Now I can move on. No, 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 no. All we've done is found A. Now I need to look at, well, how are A and X connected? Well, they're connected on a straight line. So if I now look at my straight line, I know this angle here is 70 degrees. And I've got to find the value of x. Well, what do we know about angles on a straight line? Ah, oh, they're 180 degrees. So 180 degrees. No, do it again the right way around. So x plus 70 degrees is 180 degrees. Do I want that 70 degrees there? Nah. Bye-bye. So x is 180 degrees minus 70 degrees, which is 110 degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, there are now questions in the Cambridge Essentials textbook which you can go forth and do. And when you have done them, come back. And if you're out, you know, there an internet lad, don't come back. Just stay with me. Life is good. Now, last and by no means least, uh, they're going to throw in physics for a bit of fun. And you're going to say, physics? What on earth is physics? 
Well, Fuzzix, in my language, helps me understand um, alternate angles, opposite angles, corresponding angles, and co-interior angles. But I prefer Fuzzix, it's so much shorter. And long story short, one of the rules that I need to look at is what I call the Z rule, which states if I have two sets of parallel lines and I draw a line through it so that I can see a Z, then the angle in this corner here and the angle in that corner there are exactly the same size. So there's my Z. If I have those two angles in the corner, they're exactly the same size. Now, how do we know there's a parallel line? Because I have these parallel line signs. Whoa, thank you very much. So we're now going to use this, along with my triangles and angles in the straight line, to combine the questions. So here's an example from the Cambridge Essentials textbook. Now, those of you who don't have the Cambridge Essentials textbook, it is, it is an awesome resource, um, and I, I highly recommend it. But how am I now going to find the value of A? Well, first things first, I'm now going to look for, th for two things. One, do I see a Z? Two, do I see a triangle? Well, I should think so. Here is my Z. Now, how do I know my Z is there? That's a dreadful Z, by the way, because I've got my arrows there. That tells me that I look for the corner of my Z and those angles are the same size. So I'm just going to change my pen color. Let's go red. Here is my Z. Can you see that? And here is one of my corner angles, which happens to be 40 degrees. So I now know that this angle here is 40 degrees. I don't even know what the questions are asking me to do. I'm just putting angles in. Right. Okay. They want me to find an angle A. And you're going to say, how? And I'm going to say, do you see the triangle? Well, here is my triangle. So I'm going to draw a very quick sketch outside. There is A. There is 40 degrees. And there is 80 degrees. Do I have two angles inside my triangle? Yes. Can I find the value of A? I should go, go. So I know that 40 degrees plus 80 degrees plus A is 180 degrees. That makes 120 degrees plus A. Do I want the 120 there? Nah, I'm going to get rid of it. And so 180 degrees minus 120 degrees gives A as 60 degrees. And again, the Z thing was only used for one thing. It was to help me find an angle inside that triangle so I could find the other angle inside the triangle. And my last example before this video goes to nearly 30 minutes, it's not, trust me, it's only 23 minutes at the moment, says once again find the value of A. Well, the minute I see these arrows here, I know I've got a Z rule. I'm looking for the corner of my Zs. Well, have they given me the corner of the Z? Yep, there is one corner, and so there is another one. So that's 35 degrees. I've seen my Z, I'm moving on now to I see my triangle. Oh, I do see my triangle. Hold on, here is a triangle. So have they given me three angles? And you're going to go, no, they've only given me one. They give me that 35 degrees. And I'm going to go, oh, they have, because here is my right angle. And what do I know about my right angle? It's 90 degrees. And so I have a triangle where there is A, there is 90, and there is 35. So 90 degrees plus 35 degrees plus A is 180 degrees. 90 and 35 is 125 degrees plus A. And again, you can use your calculator for this. Do I want 125 there? Nah. So I'm going to get rid of it by taking it away from both sides. Minus 125 degrees. And so what is 180 minus 125? Ooh, that's tough. I think it's 55 degrees. So let's just say 55, 60, 70, 80, 55 degrees. Now, I'm done. Pretty much, if you are following the Cambridge Essentials textbook, then, basically, long story short, you can go off and do this. But one thing here is this is just the start. There are other rules that you're going to use, but I can't say enough. Learn each of the rules, and for each diagram, try and find those triangles, straight lines, and parallel lines. Once you do that, then you can do all of these questions. But my advice is write on all the angles you can find. Don't just try and do it in your head. It's not going to work. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of this lesson. Triangle angle sum. It is, as ever, a great privilege for you to be watching these videos. Um, if you haven't already, do me a favor, subscribe. There's a little subscribey thing for you there. And if not, well, I'm pretty sure another video is loading over there of the same year level that you can watch. All right. I think I'm pretty much done. This is the Mask Guru signing out. Take care. Bye-bye.